Cuisine paints are designed and made right here in New Zealand to endure our unique climate and harsh environment. Quality paints that last. Resin, it's all over New Zealand. Kei aku nui, kei aku rahi, tēnā rā koutou katoa. I wish you all a warm welcome to the presentation of the 2020 Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards, proudly brought to you by Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects. I have hosted the New Zealand Architecture Awards in the past, in person and in front of a full audience. Things have changed this year, but as the Whakatauki has it, ka mate kainga tahi, ka ora kainga rua. When one house fails, build another. So, although the format of tonight's event is different, its purpose remains the same. To recognise the achievements of architects and their clients, celebrate New Zealand's architecture, and acknowledge the difference good design can make to our communities. Before we start the awards, we have a message from the new president of Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects, Judy Keith-Brown. Tēnā koutou e te whānau o Te Kahui Whaihanga. Over the next eight evenings, we are celebrating outstanding architecture produced by talented architects and builders and committed clients across the country during the past year. For the first time in the history of Te Kahui Whaihanga, we are doing this virtually. You can all be seen across New Zealand and the rest of the world. The team at Te Kahui Whaihanga has worked hard to support our profession during this strange time. I want you to consider your experiences during the lockdown period and how you think we might work differently. What changes do you think there will be to our houses and offices, towns and cities? How can we best contribute to the economic, environmental and social recovery of New Zealand? First, we need to be regarded as an essential profession. We need to work collaboratively and we need the public to understand what architects can offer to their communities. It's important that you know that I, as your president, and the Institute are here for you. These awards acknowledge the trust and confidence clients place in us. They also signify the difference we can make to the lives of all people and they highlight our ambition to realise healthier, more livable and more resilient buildings. Thank you to everyone who entered the awards and to the judges. It was certainly a different process this year. Congratulations to all our winners. Finally, thank you Rosine, a New Zealand company supporting New Zealand architecture. Rosine has been our partner in these awards for 30 years and it has been a great relationship. In this very unusual year, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Awards jury was one of the few local architecture awards juries able to make site visits before the lockdown. The convener of the 2020 Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards is John Henderson from Tauranga. He was joined by architect Sharon Jansen from Wellington, Fraser Cameron from Taupo, and Alice Hutchison, the director of Tauranga Art Gallery. John Henderson says the awards jury was fortunate to be able to complete its four-day physical tour before the big lockdown. He says the jury visited an excellent group of shortlisted entries, from small buildings to nationally significant large projects. The housing and commercial categories had the strongest representation. John says it would be good to see more awards entries in the multi-unit housing, hospitality, heritage and house alterations categories. One encouraging development was a growing emphasis on building quality. The jury was pleased to visit and award warm, healthy buildings that embody the best of sustainable, passive design practices. Thank you once more to John Henderson and the Waikato Bay of Plenty Awards jury. While we are celebrating the winners tonight, we want to acknowledge all of those projects that were entered into the Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards this year, and especially the projects that were shortlisted by the judges. Here are those shortlisted projects.
That was the shortlist. Now for the winners in the 2020 Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards, which will be announced by category. The first awards announced are in the category of commercial architecture. The winners are Foster Group Headquarters by Edwards White Architects. This building displays an uncommon concern for quality and design detail in an industrial context. The luminous mess facade has a proud street presence and serves as a dynamic signboard for the business. The result of the commitment by client and architect to quality is a building that is both a demonstration of their ambition and an inviting workplace. Riverbank Chambers by Edwards White Architects. The building has been completely refurbished to link to earlier developments by the same architects. Exterior vertical louver fins and a glazed roof addition give the building a clearly legible base, middle and top. The elegant top floor fit out provides broad views over the river and city, creating a very desirable workplace. Tauranga Airport by Jazzmax. A new arrivals and departure space has been elegantly stitched onto the existing terminal at Tauranga Airport, creating a strong new identity for the region's air travel gateway. The extension and reconfiguration of the building provides greater clarity, openness and ease of use. Zespri by Warren and Marnie Architects and architecture Paige Henderson in association. Highly articulated screens reminiscent of vine and shade cloth wave from the long north and south facades to passers-by. For those within, the screens afford shade and an undulating frame to Mauau and the local environs. The building is a lively workplace and a signature presence between the utilitarian port and the residential eastern part of the city. Zespri is also a winner of the Resine Colour Award. Tauranga Crossing by Warren and Māori Architects. This generous and attractive civic space is not just another mall. It provides a compelling example of what modern, multi-shop experiences can be. The design is based on two intersecting axes which generate a diagrid ceiling canopy over the retail village and entertainment spaces. The interior climate is carefully regulated, encouraging visitors to dwell a little longer. There are two winners in the education category. These awards go to The Lakes Early Childhood Education Centre by Copeland Associates Architects. A strong sheltering roof combines with a dynamic timber structure to create a stimulating learning space. Shelter, sunlight, air, tactile materials and a child-friendly perspective are sensitively considered throughout. The architecture provides protection and is also a progressive and humane solution to an institutional brief. University of Waikato, Tauranga CBD Campus by Jazzmax. This new campus creates a welcoming urban space. Bicultural design and storytelling are embedded in the expression and sequencing of spaces, as well as the skin of the building. The buildings have a great sense of connectivity to place and have established a strong living presence in the city. There is one winner in the category of heritage. This award goes to St Mary's by PAUA Architects. Intervention and renovation have given new life to the chapel of St Mary's Convent, which was built in 1926. This small but important church was threatened with demolition. Instead, it has been extensively strengthened and upgraded. It is heartening to see our built heritage retained and restored with such care. The housing category winners are 2-6 Blay House by Architecture Bureau. This townhouse explores the idea of the home as fluid space. The design creates a journey from the busy public realm of the street through relaxed family spaces to the unexpected breadth of a park outlook. The design turns the site's limitations into advantage and has a delightful family living space at its heart. Thornton Road Passive House by Archetype. Proudly meeting international Passive House standards, this home's low-key massing and colouring allow it to sit comfortably within its context. The house is sensibly organised for its retired owners and provides ample space for visiting family. Light Mine by Crossan Architects. 
Clad and reclaimed Tortora, three separate living spaces are unified by uniquely sculptural off-grid skylights projecting above the roof and referencing the mine shafts of this former gold mining town. Inverted into sculptural shafts reminiscent of James Turrell's sky spaces, the skylights allow sun and starlight to enter each room and also function as thermal shafts. Hikuwai Hill House by Dorrington Aitchison Architects. A spectacular site and clients who long contemplated escaping into a rural idyll have resulted in a compact and faithful expression of the client's ideals. Intersecting forms provide secondary and utility space and a screened northern porch floats into the landscape and frames the mountain views. Bowen Town Batch by Edwards White Architects. This strong external form is about refuge in a singular object of character, in contrast to the courtyard and pavilion approach now familiar on New Zealand's east coast. The weathered shell is carefully incised, revealing only an entry to the street. Upon entry, however, a warm, honeyed living space looks out to the sea. Kinlock Batch by Edwards White Architects. The holiday home is rethought with a stripped back approach to contemporary batch comforts and conventions. An economy of program and structure provides a refreshing response that is more enticing than the house's less restrained suburban neighbours. The warmth of the main social space is enhanced by the exposed timber floor structure and detailing. Three Gables by Edwards White Architects. Carefully designed to maintain important thresholds of privacy, this home maintains openness towards the view and opportunities for neighbourly interaction with park users. The compact and thoughtful plan, together with well-proportioned courtyards, make this house a joy for its owners. Hill House at Ha Hay by Felicity Wallace Architects. Part Fort and Part Tramper's Hut, this robust house is playful and surprising, revealing and concealing views over Ha Hay and the headland. With its series of indoor and outdoor spaces punctuated by poles, the design succeeds as a strong and idiosyncratic shelter against the elements. Papamoa Beach House by Herbst Architects. This home offers a unique approach to planning entry and circulation on a long, narrow beach site. Living spaces and the upper level master suite are clad in somber, restful hues, like the old smoked wood of Ryokan. Robertson Residence by PAUA Architects. This home is a collection of rural forms arranged on a hilltop to align with compelling views to Pirongia and Maungatautari. Robust materials are softened and a warm and inviting space is created within the industrial shell. The design is both a bold response to a particular site and a sensitive solution to dwelling there. Hot Water Beach House by Scarlet Architects. In response to the orientation, slope and unusual shape of this site, the home is organised around a triangular courtyard flanked by verandas and a central breezeway. With its predominantly dark exterior and interior scheme of pale timbers, the house is a worthy replacement for an old family batch and should ensure flexible occupancy by multiple generations for many years to come. Aspen Road House by Studio of Pacific Architecture this contemporary courtyard house with subtle modernist references retains an echo of the country villa with classic proportions. Framed views, considered symmetries and a clean and simple palette of materials make this a very comfortable family home. Built to high standards, the house is a result of years of planning and a high level of client input. Generational House by Studio Two Architects this tall gable form sits on a tight site in the densely packed suburb of Mount Maunganui. At night, the lit underside of the house becomes a beautiful golden lantern in the neighbourhood. The house, which uses materials from the client's own timber business, is carefully detailed and has been skillfully realised. Maungarongo by Toa Architects. This compact whare evolved out of the client's desire to create a contemporary Māori domestic space. The resulting design is a deeply personal one, steeped in meaning and informed by whakapapa. The home, its name means peace, 
has a spiritual and cultural relationship to the land and is carefully aligned with Mawau and connected to Otumoi Taipa. It is also considerate of the site's climate and environment. The final category of awards is Small Project Architecture. The winners are Camus Cabin by DCA Architects of Transformation. Nestled unobtrusively into lush native bush, this highly compact rectangular cabin is composed of three connected cells, bedroom, living space and kitchenette, and bathroom. Passive house design principles govern the design and ample natural light filters through large windows, opening the interior into the garden setting. Almarama Retreat by OPL and Mitchell Stout Dodd Architects in Association. This truly rustic retreat invokes the collective Kiwi memory of remote huts and simple comfort. The quintessential hut is reinvented by the architect via an elegantly articulated vernacular form and structure. Warmth, humour and comfort are intertwined with robust solutions to meet the challenges of living in an exposed and remote environment. Unique solutions providing comfort and amenity are worked into the small footprint. Congratulations to all those involved in the projects that received 2020 Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards. All winners will be acknowledged on the NZIA website and social media accounts and will be published through media outlets from tomorrow. If you are a winner, you will receive your certificate in the next few days. And please note that all award-winning projects will go forward for consideration in the 2020 New Zealand Architecture Awards, which will be judged and announced at the end of the year. Thank you again to the Waikato Bay of Plenty Architecture Awards jury convened by John Henderson. Thank you to the sponsor of the awards program, Razine Paints. And finally, thank you, wherever you are, for joining me in this unusual, but no less important, celebration of the year's best architecture in the Waikato Bay of Plenty branch of the Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. A tēnā rā tātou katoa.